Button bowls are beautiful. I'm Sarah from Buttontopia. Today we're going to make a button bowl just like this one. To begin with, we're going to need some buttons, some glue, a balloon, scissors and a pin. To get started, let's blow up our balloon. So once you've got your balloon, your buttons, your glue, your pin in your bowl handy. What we do now is we get our glue. You do a big swirl, be generous with the glue. The most important thing when you're picking your glue is to make sure you go for something that's non-toxic and also will dry clear. So I've completely covered my pink balloon in glue around the area that I want the belt and bowl to go. So as you can tell, I've gone down some sides, just a nice general coat all the way over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it up and let it dry. So now we've let the glue dry on our balloon. As you can see, there's a beautiful layer of balloon here, glue layer there. The next step for us, with more glue, start sticking some of these buttons on. This is the fun bit. This is the bit where we're gonna start to see how our bowl is coming together. One thing I found is a great idea as we first start is to put a few bigger buttons around the top. Now, these might start slipping around. Don't worry too much. Because I've got that base layer of glue down, they should be fine. I get ones that I think are going to be a bit pretty. All this base layer does is actually provides literally the, the bottom of your balloon. Right, put that one there, and because I'm feeling a bit funny, I'll get rid of that one. I'll put a pink one there. So a bit more of a pattern bottom there. So I've now got these smaller buttons, but I love these sort of translucent coloured ones. They let the light shine through really beautifully and the one that I showed you earlier on that it was a finished project, that was almost made entirely with these sort of ones. So because we've got that layer of glue at the bottom, we actually don't need to be too generous with this layer of glue because we've got that layer it's going to stick to. A little bit of glue goes a long way with this bit. The trick is to make sure you get as close as you can and try not to get the buttons off the ground. So that little pink one there that's not sitting down, a bit more glue. I've actually also got some 4mm micros. Most of these buttons I'm using are about 15mm. I find the 15mm buttons just look really pretty and I've got they're in all different kinds of colours. Whereas we've also got, try and find some, a little button ball I've got here. Here they are, this one. These tiny little green ones. So I use them for filling gaps. More on this side now, a bit more glue under that yellow one. So I've just put a whole bunch more button, buttons on this bowl, what will be our bowl. I'm just checking to make sure if there are any gaps that I might want to have filled with a button. So when in doubt, add extras, we can trim them off a little later. So if you have a look around that bowl there, you'll see that I've actually gone fairly consistently all the way around and it looks really beautiful. There are a few gaps in here so I'll grab my extra small buttons. My hands are covered in blue. And I'll fill some of those gaps where I can with the small buttons.
but we get another opportunity to have a look at this again. As long as the gaps aren't too big, you'll find that sometimes you can't actually get the micro buttons in because you really need your balloon to be flat, your bowl, sorry, to be flat. Unless the gap is big enough, you won't get a micro button in there. So what I'm doing here is I've poured the glue over the top and you need to give everything a really thick film of glue. So in this step, there is not such a thing as too much glue. Just try and get the glue in all the spaces, nice and thick layer, because the glue will actually form the main basis for our bowl. Particularly at the base, where you want extra bits of glue at the base. And if you put more at the base, it actually flows down anyway as it's drying. So don't feel like you've got too much down the bottom there. And that is the end of this step. I've just got to let it dry again. Now this next dry is actually a few hours. Um, you're better off to let it go longer because it will help the button set. So as you can see, there's some white bits. Don't worry about them too much. Moment of truth, get your pin. Pop. You know, gently, gently start pulling away from the sides. And very carefully get your fingers in there. You can hear it cracking and, and spluttering as it moves away. Because of the amount of glue that we use, you'll be able to see inside is still quite white. So what we need to do is just chop away some of this excess bit here and that'll get rid of that nasty balloon that's still stuck to the side. And there's our bowl. So I do find it best to let these sit for a bit. That's this white bit on the inside, which is actually the um, dry glue, dry a bit better before you start using your bowl for anything. And the other thing I like doing is trimming up the edges a little bit. So I get a little pair of scissors and I cut away where I've got too much excess glue. So there you go. It's our beautiful button bowl. All the buttons have stuck. You can see here where it's still a bit white. That's okay. We'll just let it dry a little bit longer. And likewise, the white on the inside, all that is, is the glue that hasn't dried completely. When it dries, it'll be clear, just like we promised. Now it's important to note that because we have used the aquid here, which is a water soluble glue, you can't actually immerse this bowl in water. I actually don't recommend at this stage putting any water anywhere near it. You could use a varnish to get a thicker coat to help it be more water resistant. So there's your finished button bowl. If you'd like to make one of your own, please go to buttontopia.com.au to purchase your supplies.